Okay. The following interview was conducted with Professor Eric Klinghammer, Professor Emeritus of Psychological Sciences for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, November 17, 2008 at his residence in um, Battleground. Welcome. Tell us a little bit about where you were born, your parents, siblings, and early years. Okay, I was born in 19, uh, 1930 in Germany, and uh, I was the uh, only child of my parents. My father was Louis, O-U-I-S, Klinghammer, and Marie Klinghammer. Thank you. And uh, at the time, he worked uh, in a... Um, in a uh, mine that uh, uh, produces clay because the area where he lived east of Kassel, K-A-S-S-E-L, uh, was rich with this special kind of clay and the whole industry has been built up there for melting crucibles. So that's what he, he was working in and uh, it was uh, quite a, a hard job. And we used to go and uh, and bring him lunch at noon. It was in, in 1930 is when I was born, and that was the time uh, when uh, uh, the uh, National Socialists and Nazis uh, got uh, started. And so my my dad uh, wanted to get away from uh, where he uh, on that job, and so he uh, enlisted in the uh, and the police in the city of Kassel. That was the city police, and that, that's what, what he did. And uh, then after a while, after four years, we moved away. Uh, no, we, we moved from, from the village where we were uh, to Kassel and stayed from 1934 to 1938. And then we moved to Weimar, which is... Uh, uh, in what later became Eastern Germany, and we moved to Weimar, and that's uh, where I uh, ended uh, uh, high school. And uh, from high school, uh, that went until 1945, when the war was over, and uh, I began to work as an interpreter for the American Army that I had, uh, made, had made some contacts. So that was uh, uh, essentially how I became friends with American soldiers, and one of whom uh, was uh, Paul Ingham, uh, I-N-G-H-I-M, and his dad was a doctor in Iowa, and he then sponsored me for me to come over to the United States. Oh, very good. Can you tell us a little where you went? Did you go to high school in, in, in Weimar? Is that where you went to high school? Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What was it like? Was it a big school? or? Well, uh, it was the only high school. It was an all-boys high school. Okay. Because uh, the girl high school was, was separate. And uh, so we had uh, uh, English, uh, Latin, ma mathematics, and uh, biology and history and uh, I guess that's all I can okay. remember. Were the there moment. any any student clubs that you could belong to or student organizations? No, we didn't have the, we okay. didn't have that at the time. Uh -huh. uh, I, I was in a, a gymnast. We had gymnastics mm -hmm. and we played soccer. Good. Uh, but uh, uh, mostly it was just uh, uh, academics because we were. <coughs> We went to school in the morning or in the afternoon because uh, we had to, to share the school because our originally high school had, during the war, become uh, a, a, a medical facility, a hospital okay. uh, for soldiers. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you, did you go to any college? At, did you go to college after that? Or oh, that, no. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, See, I never finished high school okay. uh, because the war was, was there. And then, I, like I said, I worked for the American Army. Sure. And then I had applied to come to the United States. And finally, in 1951, I came over. Very good. And I, I went to, to Chicago. My parents had, meanwhile, uh, immigrated also, so I lived with my, my parents. 
and uh, were they living in Chicago too? Yes. Uh -huh. no, when I went to high school, uh, forget the parents. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, my uh, I was there first, and I went to, to a night school in Chicago, and uh, there I, I finally finished uh, uh, and graduated uh, from high school in this country. Very good. Yeah, and uh, and then. Uh, I was uh, I worked for about a year, and then I was drafted in the, in the American Army, hmm. and I was sent uh, over to Austria. And because I, I spoke German, I was in military intelligence, and uh, uh, in Austria, uh, and I used to interview returned German prisoners who were in Russia. Okay. And uh, uh, in 1955, uh, two years. I mean, two, two months before my army time was up, Austria became independent. It was no longer being occupied. And so uh, I went uh, to, uh, I, oh, I, be, I became an American citizen while in the army in Austria. Very nice. Uh, and the reason for that was in case we, uh, there were several of us, about 100, 123 of us, who were from Eastern European countries, and in order to have the protection of the American army in case some of the Russians uh, uh, caught us. Uh, so we were made American citizens. And when we were discharged honorably, uh, then in our home place, in this case, uh, Chicago, went to federal court and then became a citizen. Yeah. This was after, sort of after two years, two and a half years. Uh, rather, normally it takes five years. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I became a citizen in, in Chicago, in federal court. And by that time, I also had the, the GI Bill, and uh, I went to the University of Chicago with my, uh, <coughs> my, my GI Bill. Very nice. And there uh, I, I, uh, I was uh, first in pre-med, and then I went to psychology, and then at the end of uh, my my time, I discovered uh, a course in ethology was given by uh, Professor Eckert Hess, and uh, ethology is the study of animal behavior from an evolutionary point of view. And uh, I did a dissertation on imprinting in in doves, and uh, then after I graduated, I. Uh, uh, with a PhD. I stayed at the University of Chicago for several years as a faculty member. And then, and I think it was in 1960, uh, six, I think it was in 1968. Okay. I was offered a job at Purdue University in the psychology department, and I taught there for 26 years. Hmm. I taught ethology, psychology, and various other courses. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did the offer come to, did someone contact you about the opening at Purdue or? Uh, yes, I was okay. recruited from uh, Henry Koffler, okay. who was the uh, uh, head of the biology department. Mm -hmm. And when he discovered that I, my degree was in the psychology, and I was then moved into the psychology department. Okay, good. Yeah. Tell us about uh, then how your uh, interest in the wolves and things Go on after you got here with your yeah. research. Well, uh, my my dissertation was in uh, with ring doves, and I became allergic to them, so I had to give them up. And then uh, when I moved to Purdue, we moved uh, bought a, a farm in the country, and uh, 75 acres, and uh, I got my first two wolves from the Brookfield Zoo in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, Coker and Cassie. And that's how it started, and, and gradually we improved and enlarged and so on, until now it's what, what uh, oh, uh, 35, 36, I think it went its 37th year wow. at uh, Wolf Park. And we're kind of unique because we're the only people in the world who uh, do demonstrations with wolves and American bison that we have, mm -hmm. and all of our wolves are hand raised bottle fit from the time they were small, uh, so they're quite socialized to, to people. Okay. And we have an education program, 
uh, where the general public comes, student, uh, school groups, uh, including from Purdue University, and, and then we also have uh, have uh, 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 interns to come from various parts of the world who spent three months here, mm -hmm. and uh, we also do a behavioral research program on our wolves and on our bison. Very good. Can, mm -hmm. can you share anything about your teaching? Are you uh, at the university working with the students? Are there any specific courses? You had something in applied ethnology. Was that one of the ones that you did? Well, it's not in ethnology. It's okay. ethology. Ethology. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Correct. And, Thanks. Uh, Thank well, you. Uh, I taught introductory psychology. I mean, I taught uh, 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 ethology, introduction to ethology, and then I taught uh, uh, various uh, seminars. And then uh, uh, one year I taught introductory psychology because they were uh, short of staff. Mm -hmm. And so I, I taught that. It was a big course. Okay, okay. Um, a little bit about um, that Isle Royal, Robert Allen, Isle oh, Royal. Yes. Did yeah, you share well, us a little bit about that? Well, when I came here, uh, Dr. Dilbert and Allen, uh, we, we became acquainted and he became my friend. And we had a group here uh, discussing uh, animal behavior. And uh, uh, one winter, I went uh, with him to Isle Royale. We drove up there with the, in his car. And then we went to an airport. And there we were taken by, by plane to Isle Royale, where the wolf research was carried out at that time by Dr. Wolf Peterson, who was his graduate student and who had also taken my course uh, at Purdue. And so when I, I got up there, I spent a week there, and as soon as we landed, uh, uh, then uh, Ralph came back from his uh, flight, his uh, research flight, and I went into the, that plane with uh, Don Murray was the pilot, mm -hmm. and he f flew me around the island uh, two of the wolves were on the uh, on the ice, and the the uh, plane was quite low, oh, about 10, 15 feet above, and about oh maybe 50, 60 feet away from the wolves, and they totally ignored it because they were so used to it. So that was interesting to watch. So I I spent a whole week there, uh -huh. and uh, observing wolves that that we could see during the day when they came by. That was very, very exciting. Yeah. Did you make any other trips there, sir, at all? No, that's the only trip I made at the time. Oh, okay. No. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, where, where do you, you, you get your, do you, uh, the source of your wolves that you're, that you get now? Do you get, the, where did you get? The first wolves uh -huh. I got from the Brookfield Zoo. Okay. And uh, then we got some more from the Philadelphia Zoo. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, that, that, that's our foundation stock. Okay. Uh, what about you have staff out there and you get volunteers? Tell us a little bit about some of the activities. Well, uh, other uh, we, have, we have paid staff uh -huh. and we have a managing director and uh, we, we, we have, uh, uh, I have uh, one, of our, one of our former students, uh, Patricia Goodman. Uh, she is our curator and she is in charge of, uh, of the wolves. She does the observations. And uh, then we have uh, Monty Sloan, who is a staff photographer, and he's the best wolf photographer in the world. He, he, uh, he has our website, and he uh, sells uh, wolf pictures. And, and then we have these seminars uh, where people come here and learn about wolves and wolf behavior mm -hmm. and, and, and so on. And so that, that's what we do in addition to and the lectures to school groups uh, that come uh, to uh, to our our park. Oh, here. And Monty Sloan is uh, in, in charge of the lecture uh, mostly mm -hmm. for that. And we have photo seminars where people can, can uh, uh, be instructed how to take uh, animal pictures. And Monty Sloan runs that. And the the people actually go in with the wolves so they can get good pictures without having to shoot the pictures through the fence. Oh, very yeah. good. Mm -hmm. What about, is there a dog-wolf, um, you see you have bison out there, and the, is there a dog-wolf 
hybrid or anything like that? No, or we don't no. have any hybrid. Okay. Uh, okay. But uh, we do the wolf bison demonstration every Sunday at two o'clock. Oh, do you? Uh -huh. And uh, where do, do you get the bison? Where do the bisons come from? Uh, I bought the bison from a dealer here. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, I forget the name of the place, not too far from here. Mm -hmm. No, the first two bison we got from the local zoo because they just had two of them and we liberated them from the zoo oh. and they brought them out here. Uh -huh. And then we got some more uh, from uh, from uh, a dealer in, uh, I forget the name of the place, uh, mm -hmm. not, not too far from here. Sure, okay. And then we decided to do a wolf bison demonstration. We had a a colleague visiting from uh, from uh, Finland, and we wanted to do something special for him. So we put the wolves together with, with the bison, and uh, that, was, uh, that was our first demonstration. The wolf had never seen a bison. Oh, the interesting. Bison had never seen a wolf. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, and so they walked up and they sniffed noses, and then the wolf went around the side, and then the the bison realized, whoops, this is a wolf. <laughs> they charged him. Okay. So that that was our our uh, first wolf bison demonstration, and we've done that ever since, and we're the only people in the world to do that. Oh, in interesting. Captivity. And he got some good pictures too with that photographer. I oh, imagine. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, you you became you got some awards. Uh, one is the Sagamore, didn't you? Tell us how you got that Sagamore, the Wabash. Well, somebody uh, somebody put me in. <laughs> uh, uh, and I got the award. Uh, Sheila Klinger came up one day and, and uh, she presented it to me. And you know who Sheila Klinger is? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes. And uh, she presented it to me. Oh, that's that's very nice. And you got a nice yeah. salutation, and you got right. it. Mm -hmm. Got it framed, huh? Yeah. The the, the nice uh, part about that is that uh, people uh, people in the conservation world they knew us, but when you get an award like that from the governor, and uh, you know it. Uh, uh, catches the eye of a lot of other people as well. That's right. And yeah. so that was uh, very what, special. What, what, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got something from the American Society of Defense of Cruelty Animals for your research with wolves. You got another award like from that at one time. Oh yeah, that oh. was uh, yeah. Good. Somebody put me in, and I went, I went to New York and I got the got an award oh, for that. Right? That's that's very nice. One of the things that we usually ask is in retirement activities, but you've already covered that, and you re you keep pretty busy though, don't you? Do, With do the what? you keep well, we usually ask what you're doing in retirement, but you've just been doing it all the time. Oh, you sure. keep pretty right. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Of yeah. course, I I don't do much of the day to day work anymore. I have. Uh, I have staff and they do that. But you got to take care of the facility. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, do you happen to have any traditions of Purdue that come to mind? Do you have a favorite at all that you'd like to share with us? A, a tradition of Purdue? Anything special that comes to mind? Well, um, uh, some of my students uh, put me in for, well, what is that called? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, Some sort of a teaching thing or? No, oh, no, okay. not for teaching. Okay. Uh, so, it, it, it's a group of st uh, where, where students uh, propose a faculty member, and then you become a member of of that group. Oh, it must be some an honorary for an honorary of some sort. Mm, no, oh. uh, name 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 some groups for me. Some what? Do, the student groups. Oh, uh, like mortarboard. Yes, that's what it was. Okay, mortarboard. Yeah. So uh, I became a, a, a faculty uh, a sponsor, I guess. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, they, they invited me, and uh, the, the students pick you. Yeah. And, and two of my students uh, picked me for that, the motor yeah. board, yeah. Right. I'm not very active anymore there. Uh -huh. The students are gone, and uh, so I don't go there anymore. Uh, let me ask you this. Some of the researchers that come out to Wolf Park, do, do they come back? I mean, do you have some that are coming on a regular basis when they're doing them, or does it vary? Well, uh, we have, uh, in fact, today, okay. one of us uh, is coming. Uh, he's from the University of, uh, of Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is uh, Clive Wynn, uh -huh. W-I-N-N-E, and uh, he is a faculty member. And he uses our wolf for some some research projects. Okay. And uh, there's a group in Hungary who compared wolves and and dogs, and uh, they, the people would point at something, 
and they found out that the, the dogs would pay attention to that, but the wolves would not very well. Oh. And, and they, they concluded then uh, that because dogs have been domesticated for so long, they paid more attention to people. And uh, this fellow from Florida came up here, and we offered him a chance to work with our wolves. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that our wolves, the way we socialize them, have no problem. You know, you, you sit there in front, and the, there are two buckets, and there's food in one, and the wolf sits in front, and, and you point there, and he goes right there. Oh, wow. Uh, so the wolves are as good, if not better, than the dogs. And uh, we discovered that. You, wor you worked that out, huh? Good. Yeah, in <laughs> fact, he's coming here today oh. with, his, with his student, uh -huh. and uh, we're going to do some more of the same. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Do you have an outstanding event in your life that you would like to share with the researchers? Comes to mind? Anything well, special? An outstanding event? event or special event in your life? Anything that comes to mind? Just well, being the first one was when I came to this country. Okay. You so know, that was the special event. That's right. And, uh, and then, of course, when I went to the American Army. Uh huh. And uh, then when my parents came over. And uh, they lived here for a while until they retired and went back to Germany. Okay. And, uh, of course, I got married the first time. Uh-huh. And uh, then uh, uh, after 40 years, I got uh, divorced and I got married again. Okay. And uh, I have a daughter. She lives in California. She's a very gifted uh, person. Uh-huh. She's a librarian and uh, a, linguist, a linguist. And uh, she... Uh, uh, she speaks uh, uh, German and English and Hungarian and American Sign Language. Well, very and, good. Uh, and uh, and Italian is uh, and Spanish as well and yeah. Italian. Right. What what sort of a librarian does she work in? A, an academic institution? Yes, she is at a at a at a, at a, uh, at a college in in California. Okay. But I don't know the name of it. Sure. Okay, that's right. Um, any um, in closing, can you sh do anything the special that you'd like to share with the researchers, Dr. Klinghammer? No. Well, with, with what researchers? Uh, the one, ones that are going to be using the the tape, they'll be studying the university. Oh, I see. Anything uh, special that that well, you'd like to say in closing? What I liked about Purdue, where I taught, was just a minute. Let me yell at the dog. Hey, okay. stop it! Hey. Hey, stop it. Somebody's coming right. These, okay. These are my, my doorbells, you know. Okay. Um, and uh, that uh, at Purdue, you know, I found uh, absolute academic freedom. Uh, you know, no one ever interfered with uh, what I taught, except that you had to uh, uh, only teach that which was your, uh, your specialty. Sure. And otherwise, uh, I... Uh, if I were to make a political statement, I would have to do this outside of class, and that was my private uh, point of view, but mm -hmm. not, not, I was not speaking as a professor sure. at the university. Okay. Which, uh, which is common, you mm -hmm. know. That's right. You don't do that. And, uh, and so if I was a political scientist, you know, it would be different. You know, I could talk sure. about politics, I guess. Sure. Okay. So, okay. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I like that. And, of course, I, I had my, my colleagues at the vet school, uh -huh. As well as uh, as uh, the wildlife department, and so in, in that case, uh, since uh, it was Purdue was a good place. Right. Okay. And you enjoyed it, and now you're living a full life as well out there at, at the oh, park. Yeah. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Thank you very much, Dr. Cunningham. We appreciate that. We're sorry we had the problem before, but you're nice, and we'll be That's in touch. All right. Thank okay. you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>